You're tuned in to Super Mega Cast, the only podcast made by brothers for brothers. Welcome back. I knocked the cord of the mic, whatever. This is the 70th episode of the Super Mega Cast. I'm here with my good buddy Matt. That's I'm, me. I'm Ryan. And, and I'm Matt. And Matt, I, I believe you had something to uh, uh, talk about, right? You had something to start us off with, to kick us off, kind of like a good football game. Yeah, a good football. I, uh, well, it wasn't anything big. I was just, I just had like a really small thing I could like, <laughs> like throw in after your, because I thought you were going to start with something and I could have just like thrown in afterwards. Oh, no. Because in the beginning, fuck, just keep going. Well, no, but, what but you it's, not, it's not a big story now. It's well, I'm st- sure we could branch it off into something. Okay, on the way here, I was trying to take a Snapchat in a dark Uber, and I had my camera on the wrong uh, facing thing, and I and I flashed the driver with my bright flash, and I felt very embarrassed. <laughs> that's all. That's all I had to say. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, speaking of Ubers, <laughs> um, I don't have any Uber stories. Fuck, dude. But, I do. Uh, but I, I do. am Uber excited for what the disaster artist, which you and I are seeing this Thursday. Yes, we are. I'm excited, man. Well, that's today, technically, because the podcast oh, yeah, comes true. out on Thursday. Yeah, dude, I got an Uber story. Uh oh. I got a I got a real good Uber story. Oh, okay. Go on. Go so on. I was in Seattle over the weekend because it was Thanksgiving, and I was like, I'm gonna go to Seattle, visit some people. Um, while in Seattle, I got in an Uber late night, and I had an Uber driver. Uh, very, it was, it was a very inappropriate Uber ride. He said a lot of line crossing things. He was this large, 345 pound man, and I know that because he told me his exact weight. 340 um, pounds. 345 pounds. 45 pounds. So that's a, that's a that's a big boy. He um How tall was he? Was he at least tall? He was uh 6 feet. Okay. Or 5'11". So my height. Yeah, something like that. Th- imagine 345. Put, yeah. Imagine putting about like 100 and some odd pounds onto me. Wow. Like 160 pounds on me. Holy. But that's more than one of me yeah. onto you. That's a, wow. Yeah, okay. That's so That's something. But, but nothing about his weight. No, I'm no, not, no offense no, we're to not anyone. Shaming. Um, I was just I'm trying to paint the picture of what this what this ride was. Was like. he bald? He was not. He had he had a little a little head of hair. A little head. A little of, head of what's hair. What's a little head of? He had hair? a small head uh, attached to his body with a little bit of hair. Did he have one of those baby curly Q hair? Yes, he did. He did. He's very babyish. <laughs> he had a baby face too. But I get in the car and he was like, "Oh, you're lanky," and I was like, <laughs> "Thank you." And that's when he said his weight, and I was like, "Oh." I'm like, what do I say back to that? Like, oh, cool. Like, awesome, man. Cool. Um, I have a channel. Um... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm actually a YouTuber. Uh, 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 believe like, it or not, guys, we don't start off or try to put YouTube into every conversation we have with someone. Well, that did come up, and I had to explain it to It was the classic, how do you make money off of that? No, like, it's because <sighs> people are always like, what do you do? And I'm like, uh, I work online. Oh, like uh, like what online? Like videos. Oh, like uh, like what kind of videos? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, every time. YouTube videos. We they, can, th- they can never just leave it at I work online. I know. Or, we got to think of something better because I always say I go, I just say I'm a video editor and say, they go oh what kind of videos do you edit and I'm like say you own a small time entertainment company and uh, you also own a fashion line yeah I'll be like <laughs> I should just start making shit up for fun I'll be like yeah I uh, I cultivate horse food and they'll be like oh okay I'm Brian Cranston's stepson. <laughs> Even though I just ask about Brian Cranston, I can make a bunch of shit up and slander him. Yeah, he's kind of, he's he's kind of a dick. Like, I mean, he, he really has is. this cool persona and everything, but he's actually he doesn't want people to know. He's actually uh, he has like an alias he goes by, and he's a senior editor at Breitbart. Believe it or not. <laughs> no, but anyway, back to my Uber ride. Uh, before we even get down the end of like the first street, he's telling me how, you know, I uh, I got in my uh, my first crash yesterday. That was my fault. <laughs> I, I was at fault uh, in this crash, and I'm like, great, I've been in the car 30 seconds. I know, it's like, thanks for telling me this. Is, Tell, is like, that... We're about to go on a long drive, and you're telling me about the crash you got in yesterday that was your fault. Because it, it puts it into perspective of how these aren't, like, train drivers. <laughs> yeah. They're not, like, taxi drivers that know the city. They're just regular people. Just some dude that could totally, like, rear end that, the Buick. He went you know? to, like, an Uber thing, got his car checked for five minutes. Took like, a little right. exam that probably took him two minutes. Yeah, it's like, and, I, and now he's out on the road driving people around. Now, now thousands of people have uh, have trusted me with their lives. Oh, jeez, man! Like he he's driving me, and I'm trying to like be nice. I'm like, oh man, it happens to everybody. It's no big deal. You know, anyone can crash a car. 
Uh, and then I was like, <laughs> happens like, every day. Some I, people die. You know, you didn't. That's so. Some people die. You know, it's no big deal. I was like, I've never, I've never uh, crashed a car. Um, but, but you know, now that I've said that, uh, knock on wood. And he's like, man, that's the worst thing to say. That's like saying, uh, <laughs> I've never had the clap. <laughs> and there was like an awkward silence. And I was like, yeah, man. I, <laughs> And uh, and then he was like, hey, "Lock on wood," huh? and I was like, "Yep." And then it was silent for a while. <laughs> yep. And, and then what in the back? Just like I picture you with your hands just. In, in, I had my hands in, on my in knees, your laps, yeah. just like. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? What did he say? He started talking about, um, yeah. He was like, you know, I grew up homophobic. And I was, <laughs> he just he just opened a conversation with that. That's like that's like I grew up Christian. But like instead of like religious or whatever, it's like I grew up homophobic. <laughs> like in a memoir, like I, grew I up hated homophobic. the gays when I was younger. Now you know, the gays are kind of cool. You know, when I was a, when I was a young boy, I really did not like those homosexuals. I I'm do able have to say I'm able to suppress my violent anger towards the gays nowadays. <laughs> I keep it in check more. <laughs> but like he, he was just telling me, and I like I don't remember why he brought that up. Uh, I really don't remember. He wanted to make because he probably thought you were gay. He might have. He's like, he, look at that bright red he jacket. Called, yeah, I was wearing a bright red jacket, and he said I was lanky. He's like, you're you're a, you're a lanky fellow. I was like, I don't think lanky means anything. Like, lanky isn't connected to like flamboyant or I guess or outwardly like stereotypically. Well, maybe because I'm I so guess. skinny though, it, like I come off as feminine. Like I look I look effeminate because of my. I do have a very effeminate uh like a like, like a feminine Eminem. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Yeah. That was good. That's, That's pretty good. Um, a but slim shady lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That was just Bo Burnham. I was just quoting Bo Burnham there. Oh, that. No, that, wa that wasn't me. That was Bo Burnham. Really? Yeah. So you have to go tweet at Bo Burnham <laughs> right now and say, my friend Ryan stole a joke from you. I laughed. I wanted to make sure you know I laughed at your joke. I'm more so disappointed because I thought that. I thought that was you. Yeah. But I've said it many times during over the course of the show. and it's Are you serious? Too. Yeah. Wow, I, I've never remembered that. I'm sorry. It's fine. Anyway. But nice because I texted Haiti. That's the next line after what I said. <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, really? So you grew up uh, homophobic. Okay. And he's like, you know, now I got to cut this 15-year-old daughter who, you know, she wants to be a boy sometimes. So I like, I really <laughs> understand it now. And I'm not homophobic anymore. And I was like. All right, man. Good. That's great. That's great to hear. I'm really glad to hear that. And what else did he start? Yeah, he started talking about sex with me, and it was really uncomfortable. Like he really started going into it, and he was like, "You ever go? Uh, you know, you're you're out here late at night. You're going to go play a game of uh, hide the penis." <laughs> you should have told him that was real clever. I was like that's that's good, man. <laughs> you should have went. That's hey. you should just went good one. Are you a comedian during the day? <laughs> and uh, should have you ever thought of stand up, my man? And what else did he say? Oh yeah, he he said he didn't like. Uh, he started going into his like sexual uh, preferences, and he was he, he told me, and I didn't ask for any of this, dude. He just like went straight into it. He was like, you know, I really don't like. Uh, he said just like he goes, I uh, I don't like Asian girls, to tell you the truth. And I was like, oh, is this guy white? Yeah. Okay. Large, large which surprised me because as like an overweight white man, I would have <laughs> thought he would have loved Asian girls. And I was like, oh, I mean, hey man, to each his own. And he's like, they're uh. They're too squeaky for me, and I was like, "Squeaky." That's what he said. He said they're too squeaky. I was like, "Squeaky." Does he only watch porn? Yeah, that and that. Has, no, he, has he never had legitimate sex with an Asian that's woman? That's the before? thing is, I think that he only like his idea of Asian women is from like porn. Yeah, and like he's like, you know, you know, they 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 squeak during sex, and I'm just not into that because you know, as a 345 like, pound man, that's not really for me. And I was like, yeah, okay, in the man. Porn, they're like, <laughs> and like I. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. It was really uncomfortable. It's just a really uncomfortable conversation. And then he was like, but my friend, you know, he married a Japanese woman. He's got a Japanese wife. And she's, you know, she's so sweet. And I'm I, surprised I, you I, didn't say Jap. I, I figured he would. <laughs> and I was surprised that he, uh, you know, I'm like, this is this was in Washington. I, I thought that I wouldn't get an Uber driver like this in Washington. But, you know. Uh, and then at the end of the night, he uh, he reached back and he, the Asian conversation was happening. Like, at, like he pulled up to let me out. And he kept kept going on and I didn't know how to end it so instead of responding to the Asian thing I was just like all right man have a great night thanks for the ride and I shook his hand uh and I got out and I left and that was my that's my and story then, then he went on his way to go terrorize someone else yeah he probably did terrorize like it was just what was his uber rating I didn't check you know I can go back and check right now go back and check all right Let's I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go uh check this man's uber real quick live on the podcast uh let's see 
Nope. That's hold on. Wrong person. I goofed, dude. Relax. How many Ubers have you taken after this guy, Matt? Okay, I found it. Jeff. Jeff. There he is. Look at him. I he got his picture. That's Jeff. That looks like a guy that would be in the Japanese women. Right? And of course he has a 4.7. He's not doing 4.7. That's not doing well. For an Uber? For Uber that's no. not that's not good at all. Can I wait, can I check my rating real quick? Yeah. I don't know if it's gone up or if it's gone down. Let me see. Let me let me, What's your, uh, let me check my rating too. Jeff drove me uh at eleven or Jeff drove me at eleven fifty seven PM on uh November twenty sixth, twenty seventeen. And uh oh I never rated him, dude. There's probably someone I've never rated because I just don't look at the app directly afterward. Oh, he's from Salem, Oregon. Oh, <laughs> wait, you Uber drivers can put in about them section. I'm 4.83, by the way. Whoa, dude. Uh, mine, my 4.84. I am. Let's see what 4. I am. 4.86. 4.86. I knew it. How'd you know? Because uh, I think we checked like a few months ago and mine was the same thing and yours is the same thing. Oh, damn. I, I swear I used to be 4.82. I guess uh, I must be charming all these Uber drivers with my, with my boyish charm. You Wait. and I have talked about this before. Have like We don't know what we did to deserve these scores on Uber. Yeah, we get in and we shut our mouths. and, I'm, and I, I get on my phone and I shut the fuck up. Like I don't bother them at all. Why would they rate me less than five stars? And I, I always give them a it. good tip. Same. I always fucking, um, like, I don't slam the door ever. I'm very cautious of slamming the door these days. I am so careful. My thing is, I don't think many Uber drivers actually rate the customers, so we only see, like, Uber drivers that only rate the customers are, like, people, like, negative. Yeah, right? Okay, I wait, I can read more about my Uber driver, um, Jeff. In his About Me section, it says, sarcastic intellectual. So he describes himself as a sarcastic intellectual. So what if he was just goofing you the whole time? He could have been, like, super fucking smart, and he was just like, I'm gonna play with this kid. He's like, I'm gonna play, like, I'm this dumb, homophobic... No, I don't no, know. People, former homophobic. Former homophobic. I don't know. People who describe themselves as an intellectual usually aren't. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're like Albert Einstein and you're known for being an intellectual. If you're like, if you're like uh, Tesla, then you're an intellectual. Yeah. Guys, just a little life tip. Probably don't describe yourself as an intellectual because if you are an intellectual, people will pick up on that. And if you describe yourself as an intellectual... People are probably going to think you're, you're a little pious. Yeah. Okay, so Jeff, his writer compliments, the, the biggest writer compliment he has is great conversation. He has 44 great conversations. Very interesting. Um, yeah, and two awesome music. So I wonder what he was playing. But there's even thank you notes you can read. Wow. Thank you notes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your service. Sounds like he was in the fucking military. <laughs> 1,000 five-star trips. This guy's done 1,000 five-star trips. A, bit, a lot of people just... Man, well, wherever you are tonight, Jeff. Um, Bless you. This podcast is dedicated to you. Buddy. And we're going to tell all of our uh, viewers to pray for you, Jeff. Yeah, everyone pray for Jeff, all Let's right? Let's take a moment of silence. Put some put some nice music on <gasps> in the back. I remembered something. Are you he said that he, prayer? he broke his toe the day before. So he does have a broken toe, and he crashed his car. So guys, let's pray for Jeff together as a group right now. Okay. And say, uh, Lord Yeshua, please, please bless Jeff. And his t broken toe and his broken car. And please uh, give him gift of Asian woman and no homophobia. God bless. Amen. Okay, Matt. Well, I was giving people a moment of, a moment of silence because I didn't want to enforce my own religion on others. We can... So, uh... Here, I'll beep out the deity's name I said. And people can... When you that... said Lord. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of lords. But still, you know, there's some that, are not, that aren't well, lords. Well, I'll beep, I'll beep the whole thing out. And then people can imagine... When the beep happened, they could they could fill in in their head whatever deity they they worship. I think that's disrespectful to your prayer. I mean, I respect your prayer, but I also want to respect others. So let's give, like, let's just not talk like at the same time for like two seconds. People can pause the video in that two seconds and okay. then pray for okay. Jeff. Okay, in whatever religious you know context you want. Of course. So guys, here is two seconds of silence for you to pray. Pause. Okay. Here here we go. Okay. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Got some good prayers in for Jeff. Jeff, hope your toe feels better, buddy. You just had at least 10 people pray for him. I'd say at least 100 people prayed for him. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to You know what? No, overstep. dude. I'm going to say 1,000 people prayed for Jeff. Fuck. Right Think about it. Let's those, say those in the comments, just, just you pray for Jeff in the comments. Leave your prayer in the comments so we know how many 
prayers exactly there are. Also, you know what? People, this is not just a podcast that's going to be listened to one day. Five years from now, someone's going to listen to this. And they're going to pray for Jeff five years from now. So you know what we've done for Jeff? We have given Jeff infinite prayers from this point out. Yeah. And and please um, start prayer threads in the comments. For Jeff. Try, try not to stack them up. Try not to stack. Ev- don't make every singular comment a prayer. Of course, that's going to happen just because, you know. It happens. But, you know, for, for the people that... Um, don't want all the fame. Start up, start a prayer thread with let's your friends. Let's get some threads going, uh, and let's pray for let's pray for Jeff down right, in guys? the comments section. So thank you, thank you, and I'm sure Jeff will uh, have his life blessed in ways unimaginable. Okay, so thank you, Jeff. Um, I was just gonna say something because it came up into my head when I said Tesla. Yeah, dude. Do you think Tesla? <laughs> Hold on, no one. Wait a second. Sorry. I was going to bring up something because I said Tesla. Do you think Elon Musk is like the Tesla of our time? It's ironic because he made the Tesla. Yeah. I think Elon Musk is, as of right now, in November 2017, I would consider him personally to be like the biggest known uh, technological innovator. I don't. Like, he, he's going to be in the history books. Elon Musk? Yeah. I think so, yeah. As time goes on, as, as he continues with SpaceX and Tesla and Because he's done stuff. more than just the cars and the space shit. He's space shit. shit. Okay, does he actually own the Washington Post, or was, or was that just a, a joke Jory was making earlier? I don't think he owns it. I know he started, like, he helped found PayPal. Yeah, and then he, made, the, he created he, PayPal. Didn't he have some battery that charged a city or some shit? I would imagine so. I think, I think... I think te- they're helping out with, like, Puerto Rico, the recovery from the hurricane. Dude, imagine this guy. He has a fucking spaceship company, a cool car company, Uber, PayPal. Man, it's got all the money in the world. I'm going to look up Elon Musk companies. He's also building, like, uh, something. Like, solar- high-speed rail systems or something. Yeah, he's got, like, Solar City, SpaceX, Musk Foundation, um, Deep Mind Technologies, Tesla Incorporated, ne- Neuralink. Jeez, uh, a, a, like satellite technology company, and then he's got what's vicar- vicarious? That's vicarious is an artificial intelligence company based in the San Francisco Bay Area, California. They are using the theorized. Holy shit! They're they're building software that can think and learn like a human. That's terrifying. That's really cool. Like AI is so cool to me, but it's also unbelievably terrifying. Yeah. You know, because it's like. Do you think we're going to get in the next few decades into the, like, realm of, like, AI rights? Like, do you think there's going to be no. start being, like, stuff for, like, AI rights? Because No, because think about it. If it gets Not to in a my point, lifetime. Just, like, in, like, little, like, kind of, like, hot, you know, those joke flatter threads that you'll find every now and then? That, yeah. That kind of started the whole th- craze, I guess. It's going to kind of be joked around like that. Like, whenever there's a breakthrough in artificial intelligence, it's going to be like, we need the rights. They're learning too fast. And then it's going to be, like, a GIF. Of, like, a stupid-looking robot just going, Duh. Well, I mean, like, if they developed a computer that could physically, like, feel and think for itself, then I guess the argument would have to arise, like, well, what kind of rights do they have? If, if it can feel like a, you know, like a, um, like a living creature. Like digital abortion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it like, do you like have a drinking kind of, age? Yeah, it's just kind of like, um... At what point is this art is this artificial intelligent thing, whatever it is, w- at what point is it not a life? Because you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because remember, like when PETA did that thing where the monkey took a picture of itself, and then the guy lost a court case, like the photographer. Because it was the monkey's picture. Yeah, it was like the monkey's intellectual property. <laughs> but it's like it's a fucking monkey. You know? I know. It's like, so that's why I was saying, like, if there's a court case that can be won like that, I think it was won. I might be wrong on that. But if the fact that it could go to court makes me think like 50 years from now when AI is like huge, then... Do you know how long it took women to get their rights? You yeah. think we're just going to hand it over to computers? No. Like old people nowadays, they're super against new stuff like like gay rights and stuff like that. Do you think when we're old, we're going to be like the group of old people against like robot rights and like AI rights and all, the, all our grandkids are going to be like, we have to be open to AI love. And we're just going to be those old people of today, except with, like, robots and shit. Yeah. But we're going to be those old people that are, like, anti-robosexuality. We're just going to be like, robots aren't people. Like, my man can't marry we're gonna a robot. We're going to be, like, the disgusting Republicans 
of this generation. And I don't mean not all Republic. I'm not saying all Republicans are disgusting. <gasps> right. I'm saying like the stereotype of the disgusting like, like the old, Republican, like the old Republican man. Yeah, like just the very harsh stereotype of just some guy in a straw hat on his porch with hey. We're gonna be that, but it's gonna be about robots. I have many Republican friends. I have many robot friends. Okay, I'm not. I talk, uh, Would you ever date a robot? <laughs> Would you ever date a Republican robot? Would you ever date a Republican, Ryan? <laughs> Would I ever date a robot? Um, no. What? Have you seen her? I have, but that dude has a bit of a, like, a mental dysfunction. A little bit, yeah. I don't think he was 100% normal. Like, I'm not saying he was, like, 100% He was broken by there. society. He, he, was, he was beaten and battered. Man, no, but I actually wonder when, like... Because it has to happen. Okay, think about how much technology has advanced just in 10 years. Think about something like Siri. You know, Siri does not seem that complex. But 10 years ago, Siri was like, whoa! So think about like 50 years from now. People are definitely going to be dating their phones. Like there will be people that will date computer programs without a doubt. Who's going to say that computers aren't going to be the ones to be like, do humans deserve the right to vote? Look at all the... Look at all the shit they did in the past. That's true. And computers, like, we're perfect. We're computers. Yeah. Okay. Real talk. We're bet Once they figure out they're better than us, which they will. Our yeah. Vision, like, it's easy to do the fucking math of how much better they, they're, they could last forever if they want. Also, they can do the math in, like, one heart million Less than second. a heartbeat. Yeah. So, okay. I know that right now it's not a threat. Or maybe it is, and it's being, being kept behind closed doors. But it's like... People are like, ah, robot takeover. Pfft, no. Like, do you think there's a point in humanity where that will be a threat of artificial intelligence uh, going to war with, like, humanity? You you just, you can't trust artificial intelligence, Because right? if it has a mind of its own, and it's like, it is superior to humans because it, it is smarter. If, if they develop it to the point where it can, like, actually think at the same level of humans, but it doesn't have, like, emotional bias and shit, yeah. then that's scary, man. That's really scary. Then, like, what if you build a computer to a point where then it can start programming itself? You know? Dude, you know, we're just the, uh, in terms of life, we're just the bridge between the, uh, the, ne the next form, whatever that will be. Whether it'll be just a big fucking rock that's, that nothing can live on anymore, or it's a totally different organism, like millions of years from now is, you know, at the head. Because of, because at some point, humanity is just going to crumble and we're not going to be around. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, maybe we we're might be go to Mars. We might be fucking the planet up so much there won't be another like intelligent species after Earth. Like, yeah. After humans mess everything up. Yeah, that's I what know. I was saying. It's either going to be just a rock or we're going to be here. I, I, I don't see us mi going millions of years in the future. No. I don't no. see that. I see so, nuclear shit's got to. It's like inevitable that someone's going to nuke someone else and start like a huge nuclear like meltdown around the world. I'm giving humanity like at the most 3000 years. I'd say, I'd say, yeah. Like I'd say with the, how, because technology is scary. Cause you know, back in the day, like in the year 1000, if two empires hated each other, they'd go kill each other with swords and bows and arrows. Yeah. Now it's like, Hey, I've got this little uh, thing, the size of a soccer ball that can literally kill like a million people in a millisecond. So. And, we're, and we're learning how to just, we're learning to send that to a country that would take about a 13 to 14 hour flight on a commercial airline. We're going to do that in 14 minutes using like this really, have you read about this launching system? Wait, China's doing this like, is that the test missile speed? Yeah. Holy like shit. Like they're going to launch it using like this air tunnel or something and it would uh, get to the United States in 14 minutes. So if like if China launched a nuke, it could get here in less than 15 minutes? It's not it's not working yet, but their their goal is to get it up to that Holy point. Holy shit. And we've been, we had a wind tunnel, I think, at one point. What the fuck? Well, there's like a theorized weapon. I don't know if it's like confirmed to be true, but there was like a theorized like hypothetical weapon that's called like the rod of God where it's literally it's not even like a nuclear weapon. It's just a metal rod that is in on like a satellite that gets shot out so quickly that when it hits the ground it creates like a massive explosion and it's not even an explosive it's just because the energy there's so much energy in this thing that's moving so fast that it just creates like the biggest explosion yeah and it's like that's scary because that's not even a bomb that's just a metal rod there's there's just it's there's just some point where it's gonna happen because 
humans are fucked. And, you know, there are a lot of political systems that are fucked and a lot of political systems that allow um, people to unfairly host power. Yeah. And these political systems allow these people to host power as in nuclear weaponry. Like yeah. The whole country, like think of North Korea is the first thing that comes to mind. Like the fact that a whole country is that crazy and that just in love with nucle- nuclear domination of others is is frightening. Yeah, especially because like they would. I don't think North Korea would like honor the whole uh, nuclear agreement. Obviously not, because they're the only country doing this kind of stuff right now. And that's with someone that probably just wants to conquer. Imagine someone who uh, just let's just say like a mass shooter. Just has the mindset of fuck all, like fuck it, and and like their thing is they don't care if they get wiped out as well. They just want to see it all go to shit. Well, that's yeah, that's a scary thing too, because it's like because it's human emotion at that point. Because because like I don't think North Korea is the only country that's tested nukes since the nineties. I think, and I think it's scary is that like I think nuclear war is inevitable. It's going to happen, even if it's a thousand years from now. Like it's got to happen eventually, and I and I think that nuclear war will be like. Probably what ends most of humanity. Probably was the Geneva Code anything to do with nuclear weaponry? Does I know it has chemical. I don't like, know shit. I, I think We're, you're not allowed to use nuclear weapons anymore. No, that's like Definitely. off limits in the whole world. Or chemical weapons, and that's why they put sanctions on North Korea because it's like North Korea is using these these like testing nukes. I think the I thought the world agreed not to do that. So I don't think you're allowed to use laser beams either. No, laser beams are are banned because. It's so funny how it's like, all right, guys, there's there's this thing called war where we all kill each other, and that's the goal is to kill each other. But there's certain things we can't kill each other with because it's too mean. It's too unfair. You got you you got to you got to kill within the the fair limits. The United States stepped over the line. Couple we, times. Now we now we now we see where the line is. So no one else can do it. It's it's like was the United States seriously just kind of like the kid that yeah just goes into the sandbox kicks sands in people's faces and it's like okay okay no one else can do that that's that's not that's a that's against the rules now <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> that's so true just oh man I, I wonder if like it'd be weird like listening back to this podcast a year from now if like someone has nuked someone by that yeah. point that'd be crazy it's like that a uh, robot robot chicken. Uh, cartoon where it's like Lil Hitler, and then it has like all the other classrooms, and it shows the U.S. kid like drinking a m- milkshake on his desk with his feet up or something. And the Jap, this Japanese kid comes over and like pushes over his milkshake. Okay, first, uh, the like something's going over. You know, Hitler's being mean. Uh, the United <laughs> States is like, this is not my problem. Then the Japanese kid comes over, pushes the milkshake over, and then he goes, now. It's my problem. <laughs> and the American kid has like blonde hair and sunglasses and shit. <laughs> oh man, guys, if you don't live in America, fuck you. <laughs> I just want to say that publicly on the podcast. And Americans are very loud. Very. Even in America. Very I catch loud. myself being loud sometimes. Like when someone here is just like, see ya. I'm like, see ya. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, why am I so <laughs> fucking loud? I know. I just picture me going, see ya. <laughs> I mean, like, like at, at, I always hear that from, like, people from other countries. Like, American tourists are super loud. They're just, like, super duper loud. And don't understand bubbles. Yeah. And uh, every time I've encountered... Uh, <laughs> they don't understand bubbles. The stupid Americans. <laughs> they try to blow bubbles. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this podcast would be so different if you had a German accent. <laughs> like, a, like a hardcore, like... I'd want a oh. Swedish accent. Oh, that'd be great, that's, man. That's Swedish, isn't it? The Oh, yeah. That's some dude. That's somewhere over there. I don't. That's like Austrian, German. I don't know. What I it just is. pictured German as. Sounded <laughs> <laughs> kind of like like a Japanese like, <laughs> general trying to speak German. <laughs> Did his best. Oh man, dude. I uh sp- so like because you know how I was in Seattle this yeah. weekend. It reminded me of a. Uh, last year I was in Seattle and I was at my uncle's house. And um, I was trying to show him something on my phone, and my iPhone was really fucked up at the time, and like it would just start clicking things on its own. So he's like, he wanted to, he wanted me to show him this picture. So I was like, yeah, sure, uncle. Here's this, uh, here's this picture. So I, I, I open up my camera roll, and I, I go to the picture, and um, and I give him my phone, and he's like looking at it for a minute, and I go in the other room, and like he comes, he's like, hey, uh, your phone, uh, it like started scrolling through your pictures, and it's stuck on this. <laughs> and it's wait, let me show you Ryan <laughs> this is the fucking picture it scrolled over to and my uncle had to go bring the phone back to me it's 
<laughs> Wait, I, well, I gotta see it. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Got it? It was this picture. <laughs> so, oh my... Fellas! <laughs> Fellas. Can I read it aloud? Yeah. Okay. Don't read the bot. Don't read the last line. Of course though. not, fellas. We all got that one homeboy who thick as fuck. And it's a picture of a. Uh... It says tag your boy that you'd have violent anal sex with. <laughs> Dead ass <laughs> though. I know a few thick boys. I replaced. I replaced. You replaced some words. I repl Yeah, I replaced a certain expletive with boys. You know what? The pictures on the screen for those who want to see. That was the picture that was like <laughs> locked on my phone screen that my uncle had to come give to me. And I gave him my phone back, and it did it again. It did it twice. <laughs> He's like, "Uh, oh, Matt." Yeah, and and I, and I had to explain. I was like, "Nah, that was a picture that you know my friend sent me as like a joke." And uh, no, it's a joke. And he was like, "Yeah, I, yeah, I, sure, I get it." But like, think about how weird that's got to be. Like, imagine like your you're, you're an uncle, and, like your nephew gives him, and then you get this like this like compressed ghetto meme that says, "Fellas, we all got that one homeboy who thick as fuck." What? Who are going to be the comedians of kind of like the generation behind us? The, the, what is it called? Generation Z? Well, I don't know because they... Isn't that what they're called? They're probably kids right now. Is that what they're called though? Generation Z? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I actually heard that for the first time from you recently. So I don't, I don't know. Let me see. Generation Z? Let me look it up. Generation Z. Generation Z is the demographic cohort after the millennials. So that's after oh, God. us. So yeah. The millennials end at the year 2000? I think so. Cause there's Wait. Okay. So Generation Z. What comes after Generation Z? What the fuck is this? People also search for Millennials, Generation X, Baby Boomers, September 11 attacks. <laughs> like, it's just, just there. Man, like, I'm scrolling generation. through, I'm looking up generation names, and all of a sudden there's a picture, and it's a violent picture of just the Twin Towers with one of the just exploding, planes yeah. <laughs> exploding into I guess into probably it. because that's the biggest historical that is a generational, event yeah, of thing. that generation, of Generation Z, I guess. If Generation Z is everything after 2000. You know what was weird that, that I talked to you about? Because we hung out with Finn and made a video with him, which was yeah. super fun. Finn's Finn, a cool kid. We love you. I love you, Finn. You should come on the podcast sometime, maybe. Absolutely. Finn wasn't alive during 9-11. You were like, no, he's not. I was like, whoa. I don't know, that, was, that just really blew me away. I was like, oh, wow. I'm realizing how much younger Finn is at that, mo at that point. I'm like, what, what is his kind of big thing? Like, uh, is like, it, like is it Donald life? Trump? Is Donald Trump his For big political, like, or just kind of like worldly event? Because he's so just kind of like for, popularized for him to be like cognitive of yeah probably like Donald even though Trump he's Canadian president yeah oh man like the the cool thing about Finn though is he's like he's he's what he's I think he's like almost fifteen but he you wouldn't guess when you hang out with him like he like his comedy and everything he feels like he's our age so that's like the weird thing about hanging out with him and he's super cool I've uh never met a fourteen year old as cool as Finn Wolfhard besides me when I was fourteen. I didn't know you when you were 14. I would have loved to have known you when you were 14, Ryan. I would have loved to have bullied you when, when you were 14. When I look back at when I was 14, I I, I look at uh, Finn and I'm like, it, he could, like, he, I was probably such just an embarrassing little shit. Dude, I, he's so cool for someone his age. And I'm <laughs> like, dude, when I was 14, I had an, a bowl cut and I wore like really <laughs> skinny jeans and I had like, an, like a scene I had a, face. I had an awful haircut. I wore shitty baggy clothes that never fit me. Same. And he's like But I guess he's also, he's also also a fucking like child star. Yeah, I guess so. But it's like, I don't know, dude, are kids becoming cooler these days? Like, cause like seriously, look back at pictures of you and me when we were in middle school and like everyone else seemed so uncool. And now you go on social media and you see like 15 year olds and you're like, oh shit, they're like, they're, they're dressing pretty hip and stuff, and they're listening to some cool music. I wasn't listening to that cool music when I was 15. What's the deal? The internet? Yeah, is it the internet? It's making everyone more mature. It is. It is making everyone more mature. There was a lot less stuff when you and I, you know, because the internet came out, ar not around, like, our time, but it was very, in it was in its early stages. It wasn't as accessible as it is today. Yeah. Mainly because of smartphones. And when I say kids becoming more mature, I mean that in the sense of not like, uh, like, Mature, like, oh, you're so mature. I mean, like, they're exposed to more, um, more like adult humor and stuff. So they because break the internet's that, just right there. Yeah, it's they, right there. They break that like childhood kind of innocence that 
you keep until usually through like high school when they're in like fifth grade. Yeah. Because like parental lock, I'm not sure how it is nowadays, but it was super good back then. Yeah. So if my parents wanted me to not see any type of thing. I had to do some some heavy lifting to find to find <laughs> that shit. Do you remember like when you were at when you were at school too? The school systems would block any website that was like fun. Like yeah, they blocked you YouTube. They blocked Google. So, they blocked Google Images. You in my just school. proxy sites though. Oh, I had a friend that uh gotten he got suspended for using a proxy because they they caught him doing it. Oh, so how, I was too scared they to do catch that. him. Uh, because it was on the log or whatever. Yeah, it was on the log, and they called oh. him to the office. I'm like, "What's this?" And they uh, kicked him out of school for a week. But like, never got caught, bitches. Nowadays, it's like, oh well, you could just use 4G. And on yeah. your phone and look at stuff at school. Like, you don't need the school's oh computer. Oh, my God. That made me remember this one time at the library in, like, high school when I was a freshman. Like, my friend was, like, showing me that you couldn't pull porn up on the computer. So he looked up something. Like, <laughs> and then it was on Google Images and it was this just porn website. At he, school? Like, he found it through Google Images or something. He found it through an image. Like, he went to the, I don't know how he did it. But he got to some porn website, and he's like, I'm like, what? He goes, wait, this wasn't supposed to happen. We're in the middle of the library. The computers are in the dead center of the library. <laughs> and, and, and he tried to exit out, but computers back then weren't, weren't as trustworthy, so it froze up. Oh, and no. And so the bell, the bell already had rung, and you know how you have that five-minute period? So he was just showing me in this five-minute period. I'm like, dude, we have to go. So we just left. <laughs> the library with the porn on. Was the he computer. logged into his like school account? Though? Yeah. Oh fuck! I did. I did. I don't. I don't know what happened to him. I say we were friends, but we were more like acquaintances. You oh know, people God. that you only talk to in your one class. But, but for you, for you know, for storytelling, it's easier to say friend than yeah. like. I knew I had this acquaintance. He was one of those kids that you only talk to in that certain class that you go yep. to. But you didn't know anything else outside of that. You didn't class. hang out outside of school or anything. Yeah. He wasn't in your main friend group. Did I ever tell you I saw a guy at a public library looking at porn once? Like, was he masturbating? No, he was, just, he was just scrolling through some weird, like, really small porn blog. It is both, like, so embarrassing for the person, and I also feel bad for him, but then I'm like, oh, this creep, this is a public area. Have you seen those videos where, like, someone films, like, this old guy looking at porn? In a library, yeah. Yeah, it's that, there's this one video of this guy with, like, cra crazy hair, he goes, oh. Hey. Yeah, I've seen he that. Does that. Like, I kind of felt bad for him, even though he's being a fucking creep. I know. I feel like, like he's just like such an unaware creep, and it's like, oh, he's aware. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just felt bad because it's like that's so embarrassing. But then I got to remember he's fucking doing that in public, so I yeah. shouldn't feel bad for him. Exactly. Don't look at porn in public, guys. You should not do that. That's not. That, that's that's for when you're at home. Is it illegal? Uh, to look at porn in public? Yeah. I don't know if there's a law against looking at porn in public. I think doing it in a way that where you could expose it to people, like at the library. You're definitely exposing it because the computer this guy was at was facing everyone. And I was like, what the fuck are you looking at, dude? I didn't say that. I filmed them, actually. Uh, I didn't let him know I filmed them, but I, I had it on my phone for a while because I thought it was funny. And I sent it to my friends. But he was like just scrolling through some weird porn blog in the middle of the library. And it's like, dude, you're not even trying to cover up the screen. <laughs> like, how do you get to that point in life where you just don't give a shit? It's like, eh, I'll just look at some porn. Uh, you know, no one, no one like if, even if they see me, I don't really care. It's like if they kick him out. He gets kicked out. Then he has the images in his brain. Holy shit, I remembered I read this whole book and was precisely on why you masturbate. It you was, read a book on why you masturbate? Yeah, because uh, like some youth leader or something. <laughs> it's <laughs> a great way to like just start going into the story. <laughs> it was, we were learning like the sex lessons or whatever. In My church never did church. those. That sounds weird. I went, I we went, were learning the sex lessons <laughs> in church. <laughs> It was it was it was sex ed, but in church. But it was mainly like really don't do, like don't do this shit don't, when don't we go on yourself. youth trips and shit like that. And it taught oh. you, and it was teaching you what exactly they meant. And so it's like your body's gonna start changing. You're gonna feel attracted, but don't act on those things. You know, it's like one of those one of that one of those types of things. And they had books <laughs> that they were like saying were good. And so one of the youth leaders was like, "Here's a book." It was all it was all about kind of like uh, what happens in your brain while you masturbate like the science of like the dopamine and everything. why do you feel bad after you masturbate well that's actually god inside of it was a christian head. book like yeah, that's like the sole purpose of the book wasn't about masturbation but that was a large section man imagine i remember it was like, bookmarked okay so we feel weird when people ask us what we do imagine it's like so what do you do i uh i, I wrote a book uh <laughs> teaching christian kids the truth about masturbation 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's what I'm gonna start saying in Ubers. I'm like, I actually, I write books about masturbation for, uh, for, to educate Christian children. To educate the youth. Some of it, I don't know if it was true. One of the things was, once you, uh, you once know. Once you splooge. Once you splooge, your, Shoot like, your brain takes a snapshot of that image. Or whatever. I don't, I don't know about about that. Not to where you can pull it up like perfectly in your brain, but like that is kind of seared a little more into your memory at that moment. Well, I actually, maybe I could see that because when you splooge, you get a huge dopamine rush. So I imagine your brain would remember everything that's happening during a specific moment of like elevated dopamine. But I, what, what was the point of them bringing that up? Just to be like, you're going to remember your sin and feel guilty about it? I don't know. I don't remember the book. Was the book literally just teaching you about masturbation? <laughs> it, was, it was teaching you about just masturbation. Was it like a negative lesson? Porn. Just how you shouldn't do it. How you shouldn't. How you shouldn't. You shouldn't look at breasts I know, online. I know it feels good, but you shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. Bad, kids. bad, bad. We here we are uh, on the Super Mega Podcast to officially condone masturbation and pornography, guys. Hey, and, and for all you all you guys doing No Nut November, today's the, the, when this podcast comes out. It's your last day of No Nut November, guys. So so be strong. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't splooge. Don't splooge. Please don't splooge. And Ryan and I say that if you masturbate once in your life, you're going to hell. That's there, just a there, fact. There are people that are just like, God damn it. Just because they were listening to us on speakers and the conversations were kind of all right. And then it started us talking about And then we just use the word masturbate a lot. And whenever we use the fucking word masturbate, masturbate it's just like, when it, it's like one of those words you hear, your head's like, huh? You know, the thing is like. Someone talking about masturbation? It's more, it's more of a professional word than like jerk off. But it's more. <laughs> jerk off, It's dude. more embarrassing. Dude, are you going to go beat your meat? Dude, I'm gonna go slap my shaft around a little <laughs> Spank bit. Spank the monkey. I'm gonna go choke the chicken. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm trying to think of some more I could, and I'm gonna go. Jog on. Do you like? Don't don't you agree that the word masturbate is more of like an uncomfortable word to say than like jerk off? It's like it's like ugh, well it, jerk it weird. It's like jerk off. You can. It's like uh, it's chill. It's it's like one of those things where you can open the door and be like jerk off. And shut it. Yeah, and shut it. It's like one of those phrases where it feels like you're just getting it out. You're just getting it out there. But masturbate, it's like masturbate. Yeah, it's like drawn out, and it's like too <laughs> professional. It's like it feels, it's a harsh word. It, masturbate. Master it feels too is a commanding word, and bait is a very violent word in in bait. in the way you use it, like sharp fuck con. or dick, bait. bitch. Masturbate it, has some sharp consonants. Yeah. There. Man, if this podcast doesn't get demonetized, <laughs> because the tra like the computers go through the transcripts and it just pick it up, masturbate, masturbate. Ma okay, well, well, this podcast is no good. Anymore. <laughs> I know this. There's no way this is being monetized. Oh god damn it! Big, big, seriously, big round of applause to YouTube for demonetizing literally 95 percent of the videos we upload, so we can't make any money off of them. And then maybe like a day later, being like, oh, just kidding, they were family friendly. They're the whole all time. green in our fucking channel. Literally, they let go every single video except the. podcast. Podcast best ofs, not sure why. Those are the ones they keep. Every other video, minus like two or three every two months, they let go of. With Far Cry, they were good for days. The moment it goes public, yellow. Yeah, so we started uploading videos like way in advance. Then they get flagged and then we appeal them. Sometimes before they we go get public. lucky. Sometimes we get lucky. We got a series coming out real soon that I'm really excited about because it's a really Really good series, in my opinion, that we already got all cleared for monetization, and I swear to Christ. Like, but seriously, it's like, every video we upload gets flagged, and we don't get to make, uh, like, the that sweet proper money. revenue on it. That, you know, I mean, that's how we support ourselves. That's how we make a living. with the holidays. Yeah. Like, you, you get, basically, during the holidays, you get a higher RPM. What is an RPM, Matthew? That basically means how much money you make per, uh, amount of YouTube video watched. Yeah, because the reason that is is because uh, advertisers put a lot of their ads uh, during the holidays because like buy this, buy that. That's when people advertise the most. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, therefore, you make the you make more money in the last quarter of the year. Yeah. So th for YouTubers everywhere, it's kind of like this big bastion of ah big numbers, but with the recent YouTube shit, it's just kind of average numbers. It's like well, well. Thanks, YouTube. I mean, I, it's just disappointing knowing that it's like, oh, well, we could be making, you know, more off of our videos, but thanks to YouTube's stupid system, we're not. And I think what makes me the most upset is that all of the videos in the end are determined as family friendly. So we lost the money for nothing. And there's no form of compensation, of course. It's just, well, well 
You don't get uh, you that revenue's gone. Sorry. And YouTube's excuse is, hey, well, uh, the system is learning. That's why when it lets go of videos, it learns not to flag videos. That's not true. It flags yeah. our videos more than ever, and it lets them all go. So the system's clearly not learning. And then, uh, so let's let like for example, you know, Cuphead's episode one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is nine the finale? I think so. Yeah. And nine the finale are all good. They're all green. Number four, on the other hand, is confirmed as being like non-age appropriate. Yeah, non-advertiser friendly. Yeah, and it's like. What? And the thing is, they're not even specific about what makes the video. Like, it would be so much better if they at least, like, gave you a time code. Like, it's not advertiser friendly because the transcript picked uh, inappropriate language up at four minutes and 60 seconds. Wait, that didn't make sense. Four minutes and 15 seconds. It's like shit like that. It's like if they gave you a reason, if they were like violence, it's like, okay, well, we talk about guns at this in this video. All right, let's yeah, cut that out. They got give themselves it. an out, though. Yeah, that's the whole, it's it's so stupid. It's unbelievable. YouTube is a uh, a little bit of a shitty company, excuse my language. But, you know, they, uh, uh, I, I was, my, sorry, my, my, my just brain went back to, like, before I was a content creator on YouTube and when I was just a fan of YouTubers. Yeah. Those were some good old, those were just some good times as a, just childhood in general. Yeah. Just kind of like going over to like a friend's house and watching like a Smosh video or some shit. I mean, I still do that. Not Smosh, but I, I still, I still, <laughs> no, nothing against Smosh. I'm just saying if it's not that. what I do now. Like I'll, I'll go to my friend's house and we'll just try to find really weird, obscure YouTube videos with like 20 views. It's my, that's one of my favorite things to do. What what we do is like I'll go and we'll like put up compilations. So one time me and my friend group, we did an odds are. Like odds are we have to watch this hour long King Batch Vine compilation. <laughs> <laughs> and and we lost. Did we, you watch the whole thing? It, we got through half of it. So we made through like half an hour. You gotta finish that, man. Next time next time you're back in Columbia, you have we to just go back do and it. finish we it. We could not do it. And you know vines are like seven seconds or whatever. So it's That's like, a shit ton of vines, man. Dude, yeah. I, uh, I remember I, I lost a, what are the odds when I was a freshman that it was like, I, my friend and I had to listen to the entire 10 hour extended version of Life is Beautiful, which was a track from Deadly Premonition. And it's one that's like, <laughs> that song. How'd you have to listen to that? It was on YouTube. So we Did got you have to like pause and play mm -hmm. over. Would you just like talk and like yeah. have it in the background? We got four something hours in. Okay. Never finished it though. But, but four hours. And that's a lot. Of, that's it's a good, good song, though. It's actually a surprisingly good song. Have you listened? Have you heard it from Deadly Premonition? Yeah, because I edited the Game Grumps. That Deadly song is fucking shit. awesome. That game has good music. I do have to say, they reuse the same tracks over and over. But it, that game has some pretty good music. I just don't have any good memories because of the snafu that happened. Oh yeah, and I had to put in like door sound effects, gun sound effects, footsteps sometimes, thunder, lightning, car door sound effects, car driving sound effects, everything. After not lightning, sorry, just thunder sound. Shortly effects. after we started working in Game Grumps. Ryan had to edit Deadly Premonition. 14 episodes. When the audio got lost, so he had to, like, add all the sound effects in manually, which it, is a lot more work than it seems. Yeah, it was, like, 21 episodes. We we uh, came in and recorded a bunch of zombie noises. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that I just added the background. In. I forgot about that. Uh, Good yeah, times, It was man. fun. I have to say that was, like, a fun little kind of just project. Uh, looking back. During, it was... It was uh, the first seven episodes not so bad. When I found out that the next seven episodes also didn't have sound, I wasn't. I wasn't, wasn't much, too happy. Yeah, I wasn't much of a happy camper. But you know, you did kill my cat. But I let things in the past slide. You know, I don't hold grudges. It's fine. Rest in peace, banana. But it's cool, man. I'm not mad. R.I.P. R.I.P. Man, pour one out for my homie, banana. My sweet, my sweet dearest banana. Who the hair on his back stands up, and I don't know why it always is standing up. Always? So vet veterinarians in the comments, if you know why his hair like stands up, like it's just always like ever since I got him, it just stands up like in the middle of his back, and I yeah I brush it down and it just stays up. Don't know why it looks weird. So that's not where he licks his back or whatever. He literally can't get to that part of his back. It's uh -huh. like straight on his spine. It just like his hair stands up like a like uh like a fish that has a, a fin. Okay, it's weird, just like prickly. Ryan's movie recommendation of whatever. <laughs> it's time for Ryan's movie recommendation of whatever. I saw the best movie I've seen all year. 
Damn. And when I first saw it. it, I was like, it's really good. And then I thought about it some more and I want to go see it again. But I, it's definitely my favorite viewing experience, and it, uh, and it's just might be my favorite movie of 2017. It's Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. That's comma, Missouri, okay? That's uh, I really want to see it. The trailer looked awesome. So good. And Tucker saw it, too, and said it was incredible. Have you ever seen In Bruges? I have not. Have you ever seen Seven Psychopaths? I have not. Oh. Have you heard of any of those? From did, the same director. Brad, was Brad Pitt in Seven Psychopaths? No. Sam Rockwell. I'm, and, I'm thinking of 12 Monkeys. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, it was just a really good movie. I think you'd like it. Yeah, I definitely want to see Was it emotional? Uh, it had like a, it had like emotional scenes, but it's kind of mixture of dark tone and, you know, lightheartedness. I don't want to say lighthearted. Cried. It's not like a happy comedy. It's, yeah. It's a... Uh, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want people to expect. I don't want to tell people what to expect, but I just want to say I enjoyed that they cared about the characters they put in their story. Because, you know, when you read a good book and you're like, that character was memorable. I remember that character. And I, and you can kind of list the character traits off because they were kind of yeah, like just a good character, not just a stale kind of one dimensional thing. Every I liked most characters in that movie. That's like Woody awesome. Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, and I. Oh, who played the lead? I'm slipping on her name, but the lead actress was super good. Oh man, I really want to see it now. Maybe I'll go see it tonight or tomorrow night. Who knows? I got so much work to do because the holidays are coming up. You and I both, oh, brother. We are, we are swamped, dude. We are swamped for the next three weeks, except the, for this upcoming week because yeah. we're going somewhere. Yes, we are. We're going to Disney World. Yay! Woo! So yeah, we're going to Disney World. That'll be fun. But yeah, guys, uh, that's Ryan's movie recommendation of yeah. whatever. I hope you guys liked it. So if Ryan says that that's his favorite movie of the year, then that means... Might should... be. I haven't finished the year yet. Okay. But that means you should probably go see it. Uh, I will probably see it and give my comments on a later podcast. So stay tuned uh, unless uh, you're listening to this way later and you can go skip to that podcast right now. Go do it then. But this has been a wonderful episode 70 of our podcast. We'll be back next week with episode 71. Uh, oh, yeah, and sorry last week there was no podcast because it was Thanksgiving and we just uploaded the uh, Cooking with Finn Wolfhard video um, instead of the podcast. And we hope you guys yeah. like that because we had a really fun time making it. Got more stuff like that coming soon. Not a fun time eating the food, though. I did not have a fun time eating that food. That Tucker's food was drink disgusting. was the fucking worst. That was seriously, like, the worst thing ever. I wanna, we didn't even talk about that well, at I wanna, all. I want to wait till we have Tucker back on so yeah. we can talk about our meals in length and yes. the experience. At a later date, uh, at the maybe the next podcast or uh, an upcoming podcast, we will definitely talk more about the cooking video we did with Finn Wolfhard yeah, but, and, uh, like, more behind-the-scenes stuff yeah. about that. But unfortunately, Tucker took a trip to Peru, so... Um, we'll be seeing him whenever he gets back from Peru. He might not ever get back. He might, uh, he might be evading the law, but I can't go into much. So. Yeah. But, uh, Tucker, if you're listening to our podcast on, uh, your wonderful, uh, trip in Peru. On like a little ham radio and he's got a full beard <laughs> and he's like up in the mountains hiding from the cops. Yeah. I, I, we miss you, buddy. Come home. Cause his plan is to build a rocket ship in Dragon. Peru. Shh, shh, shh. Oh. Sorry. Cannot talk about that. But anyways, uh, thank you all for joining us on the podcast. We appreciate everyone who listens. All um, of you. We appreciate definitely everyone who supports us in every way, whether that be um, watching the videos, commenting, liking, responding, you know, through social media or just overall just being a fan. Or Telling even your friends. Buying the merch. Yeah, buying the merch for real you guys because that's really helping us out in this whole YouTube shit, how they're demonetizing all this shit. Any way of support you guys show, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, I still sometimes don't understand why, because I see myself as, you know, just some guy that happened to land here. Same. But here I am. So, and people seem to fucking enjoy it for some reason. I don't, whatever. I don't know. I always, I, it's just that it's, I can't get past it. It's weird. I can't get Same, past man. it. I still can't. Like, like here I am in your life. Here you, you are, are in mine. mine. Yes, we have the sweet life. Most of the time, you and me.